is we're in court this morning after yesterday's spectacular high wire protest at Procter and Gamble headquarters. High bonds were set for all nine who managed to breach P&G security and take a truckload of equipment to the 12th floor of the company's twin towers. Local 12's Joe Webb was in court this morning, joins us from the newsroom with the latest. Joe. Well, Kit, all nine, six men and three women from all parts of the country are charged with burglary and vandalism. Now, the judge set a high bond and scolded them, saying they put people in danger and turned a selfless cause into a selfish act. Now, before arraigning the demonstrators, Judge Greenberg said in open court that he owns Procter & Gamble's stock, but he said that he would be fair to them. Now, the protesters come from both coasts and the Midwest. They have jobs ranging from bicycle technicians to freelance photographers. But what do they do in their day jobs? Yesterday, they carried out a well-planned, well-executed protest that stumped the security of one of the world's most security-conscious companies. Now, sources tell Local 12, but police will not confirm that fake IDs were used to get past security and up to the 12th floor of P&G's buildings. There, they broke locks on windows and climbed onto ledges to unfurl those two banners protesting P&G's use of palm oil harvested from Indonesia. Now, Cincinnati police say they not only breached security, but literally got enough equipment in the building that it took a pickup truck to get it to the police evidence room. Luggage. Um, they had their Carhartt um, outfits. Uh, they, they apparently changed clothes. Uh, they had jacks to stop the windows from being open. They had their helmets with the helmet cams on them. Um, they had all kind of repelling gear. Now, Captain Brocksterman says everyone is lucky that they carried equipment and not explosives. He says if these people had been terrorists, the outcome would have been horrific. But it wasn't. Broxman, who was face to face with protesters on the 12th floor of the building, says they were polite, non-threatening, and surrendered peacefully. The scope of what they did is not only amazing, but it's frightening, Kit, that they were able to pull it off. It is frightening for the people in the building and down below, everyone downtown. Oh, absolutely. So, and that we'll have more on that coming up at four and five on just exactly what may have happened to allow this to okay. take Okay, thank you, Joe. And the protesters are charged with burglary and vandalism. The judge set bond at $50,000 each. A Greenpeace spokesperson says those charges are extreme, but that the protesters accept the consequences of their actions. The owner of a local salon prepares to take legal action against the city of Cincinnati. Paragon Salon is currently inside a downtown building at 4th and Ray Streets. Well, the city has plans to redevelop that property and create apartments and a grocery store. Paragon Salon's owner has disagreed with city leaders recently over whether the salon should relocate and who should cover the relocation cost. The salon's attorney, Matthew Fellerhoff, says the city will now have to develop the property around the salon or come up with another solution. Paragon has had enough. It needs to do, take care of its business and assure that it can stay here through the end of the lease. That's what it has a legal right to do, and that's what we're going to do. There's no, no longer interest in you. There, not under the term. The city doesn't have any interest in moving us. We, we, and if we're going to stay here, as the mayor has said, we're going to. Uh, the, the city has to be a, 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 you know, a responsible landlord. The city of Cincinnati has yet to respond to today's comments from the owners of Paragon Salon. A tri-state man accused of leading police through local neighborhoods before crashing his car is ordered held on more than $100,000 bond. 28-year-old J.C. Lang faces charges that include failure to comply with a police officer. Colerain Township Police say Lang was behind the wheel of a car they tried to stop early yesterday morning near the intersection of Pippin and Golf Roads. The car sped away, eventually crashing on a dare court miles away.